Welcome to the How Did They Do It Real Estate Podcast. Have you ever wondered how people succeed in real estate and what steps they took to get there? If so, this podcast is for you. Your hosts, Sayla and Eileen Prack, interview top experts in the real estate community to share with you their real estate journey and how they achieved massive success. Our goal is to provide you with valuable real estate resources and to help you apply it to your own real estate goal. Welcome to today's episode of the How Did They Do It Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Eileen Prack. And today we brought on Dr. Mikalia Lake as our guest. She is the founder and managing partner of Titan Core Capital. And she is also a cardiologist who attended medical school at Emory University School of Medicine. She started her real estate investing journey back in 2016 with her first single family rental. And with that first door taught her many invaluable lessons that led to further success in real estate. And over time, she got involved in other aspects of real estate, including flipping homes in the Atlanta area, investing as a limited partner in commercial real estate, retail, and multifamily before ultimately crossing over to the general partner side of multifamily real estate. So Dr. Mickey, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thank you for such a nice introduction. I'm doing very well. I am very grateful to be here. Mickey, can you please share a little bit more about your background and how you got started with real estate? Yeah, I'm a practicing cardiologist and my journey into real estate probably started before I realized it. While I was in college, I worked for a realtor investor, but my heart was set on attending medical school at the time. And I didn't pay too much attention to the real estate, but I paid attention to the mindset nuggets, the lessons he taught me while I was there. Fast forward a couple of years, went through medical school, got a great job and really found a lot of success in that first job. I was the youngest partner and I became the lead physician for the group. I also uh, held a medical directorship uh, within this four, now five hospital system. And I worked very, very hard and it worked for a while, but after I had kids, things changed. I found myself working harder and also over time, some of our partners left. And one day I was rushing home at 7.30, as I always did, and I thought I made it home on time. And I said to my daughter, I said, Chloe, go get your book. It's time for us to read and go to bed. And she said, no, mom, it's okay. Nana will put me to bed. She calls my mom, Nana. And um, I said to her, how come you don't want me to put you to bed? She said, well, you go finish work, mom. And then it dawned on me that throughout this entire time, I saw her acting like me. She pulled up books and pretended to be typing on the computer and calling patients. Hi, this is Dr. Chloe. And that's what she saw me as, you know, a working mom who just worked more than I was a mom. And she let me know that night. And it was quite a gut punch. I realized I had to do something different. I realized I was probably more snappy with my husband, probably not spending as much time with the kids. I got to know my kids when we were on vacation. I was like, oh, she can do that. Oh, Matthew can do this. And that didn't feel great. Even my own health started to suffer for for it. And so I started looking at ways to be more present for my family, but not necessarily sacrifice my income. And at the same time, I noticed I was growing so tired and working so much that it was really hard to be present for not only my family, but my patients. And I wanted that back. And so I started exploring uh, investing in real estate. I had lots of conversations with other doctors. I even attended a conference that was run by a doctor and I was blown away. I walked into this large room filled with physicians and people connected to medicine who were all happy and they looked well rested. And I thought, geez, I'd love to be in their shoes one day. And I learned a lot. There were people working in in real estate in in different uh, areas of real estate, multifamily, storage, you name it. And I I thought to myself, I ought to explore this some more. And so I attended more conferences, read a lot of books, invested heavily in my own growth and uh, started investing as a limited partner. Truth be told, my first investment as a limited partner, I don't know that I knew exactly what I was doing, but I did it. And from then I grew, learned a lot more, met a lot more people and decided it was time to climb over to the general partnership uh, side. And as I did that, I realized that the life I was living is not what I wanted. I wanted more 
and it would require a change. I actually ended up resigning that position that I held and it's it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It just it just is. I needed to make that change to allow me more time in real estate and more time to grow with my family. And one of the surprising things is when I did that, I did grow in real estate. I did have the time with my family, but I also rekindled my love of medicine. I took a position in Fort Lauderdale where I now live and work, which brings me a lot closer to my family. And I took a position in which I uh, shouldered a pay cut, but I am much happier. I love what I do. I can practice the kind of medicine I want to practice and I don't overbook. I can sit and actually chat with my patients. And so I've found love in medicine and have been able to gain the freedom that I had yearned for. Your story really resonates with me also. I think because as a working mom myself too, Mm -hmm. and having to commute and work the long hours like you had to also, getting home at 7.30 at night, barely having any time to spend with your kids, all of a sudden you realize like they are so grown up, like before you even know it. And then you miss all these milestones. And it's just like, you only have this one time to be with them at this small age. And so I, when you're talking about your story, it's just like bringing me back to my own story. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's something many working moms, I can't say for everyone, but I I do know many working physician moms struggle with this, this mom guilt, this, how am I present for my patients and my family at the same time? And some of us strive to do that and make our families a priority. And every time I said yes to my job, I realized that I was saying no to the people who mattered the most to me. And that had to change. And it's important for us to realize no one's going to change that for you. Your employer isn't going to change that for you. If you desire that change, you have to be willing to make that change yourself. And there will be some sacrifice. So you had gotten to a level in your career where you were in a leader in the leadership position. You had really excelled in your in your role in especially in medicine. It's already a difficult field to get into. When you had to make that decision and you realized that that wasn't the path that you wanted to continue to go down, or your love for medicine started to diminish a little bit, you didn't have enough time for your family. Was it a difficult decision for you to decide to take a patient? cut after working so hard, giving up that role that you've worked years for and years in and built up that relationship with that company? Absolutely. It was a very tumultuous moment. I I longed for this freedom. I looked forward to it and the thought of it made me happy, but it was so super scary. We I earned a decent living. My kids could attend good schools. The future looked pretty secure, but yet it didn't feel right. And so I got to the point where I knew I had to change something and I wouldn't have done it on my own, to be truthful. I had a coach who helped me focus more on the future and what there was to gain rather than what I was losing. And in actuality, I didn't lose very much. Maybe I lost a couple of titles, director of X, Y, and Z. But I gained so much more and my life became more full. And I continued to practice just in a way that was better in aligned with the way I see cardiology today. And so I'm grateful I took that leap, but it was very hard. And I think there are times in life where we're going to come at a crossroads and we're going to have to just make a decision that suits uh, what our priorities are at that time. I think something that you said really stuck out also it's it's the the titles when you're working in the corporate world when we grow up and we're in this environment of wanting to excel in our careers we're wanting to work our way up the corporate ladder it's really to gain a sense of pride ship and a, a sense of accomplishment by reaching a certain level a certain title and yeah. then to realize that once you actually get to that level not much has changed from where you kind of started off with. And does that really, is that really what you envision your life to be like? And some people it is. And some people they realize like I'm giving up hours of my day, sacrificing some time for my family and, and the things that I actually really am passionate about to do this instead where 
originally I thought that it was going to really give me that fulfillment, but in hindsight, it it maybe t- took a little bit more away than you had anticipated. Absolutely. And for anyone who is at a similar point in life, and my best advice is, look, you don't have to have all the pieces of the puzzle figured out. Many times, and many of the folks I know who've had a similar kind of journey, whether it's from medicine or the corporate world or law, you, you know you need to jump. And sometimes you're not sure where the path is going to lead you. And the path is often a little bit different than you think it is. But having a little bit of faith and persistence will get you there. And it's funny, one of the things that I I journal, I have and I have a productivity planner that gives these little quotes at the top of it. And the universe just sends you what you need sometimes. And I remember seeing this quote and I'm paraphrasing here, but it says, do not lament so much about your career. It's not a career that you have. It's a life. And I think we ought to step back and and try to just shift away from the external validation and think about what it is that we need in this moment and what's going to make us all happy moving forward. When you discovered real estate and wanting to get into that, what was it about that space that really resonated well with you and what you're trying to do, the lifestyle? In, com- in also in conjunction with what you also love, which is medicine. Yeah. So one of the things about real estate, particularly multifamily, is, is how crucial it is for human life, right? People need somewhere to live. And so health and housing aren't that different, right? People need both and people need safe, clean places to live. And one of the things that we pride about our company, about Titan Core Capital, is we always look for ways to enhance the life of our tenant to make sure we are sustainable and uh, improving um, upon you know uh, you know the environment altogether. So whether it's using low flow toilets or you know um, water savings devices or so forth, we just want to make sure our em- environmental footprint is is lower. So I think the the two share a lot. They're they're both crucial human needs. And then the other thing I really like about real estate is the flexibility. Um, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I can take care of a lot of work at five o'clock in the morning, um, you know, and it doesn't require me to be someplace at a specific time always. So there's a lot of flexibility there. And I've just met wonderful people in real estate. I, I had wonderful doctor friends, but in my past life, I only had doctor friends. And now I meet a lot of other folks from different backgrounds, from law, from medicine, from the corporate world, teachers. Um, And it it allowed me to grow in a way that I didn't realize. This isn't something I truly anticipated, but I've read so much more um, being in the real estate space than I did in medicine. In, In the prior seven years, I had only read medical literature. And so I felt like I've grown exponentially as a human being, just reading all these wonderful books on mindset and just exploring all of that really feeds my soul. You also said earlier too, you wanted to find a path that allowed you to maintain essentially your standard of living and being able to provide the same types of the same types of opportunities that you have as you're working the other job as a cardiologist as well. So when you were looking for it, what were some of the important things that you had to determine and evaluate as you were getting into real estate as well to make sure that you were on that same path? Yeah. So one of the things that this other part of my life needed to provide was income, right? And real estate is a really good way to gain cash flow to supplement one's income, to essentially buy back your time. So I was able to cut back on my W-2 job. I was able to avoid overbooking patients. I was even able to take vacations, which is interesting. I, I realize a lot of people don't know this, but many doctors don't get paid if they don't see patients. And so there are many physicians who don't take the vacation that they actually want. They don't rejuvenate themselves. They don't recharge because they're thinking, if I'm not there, I won't be able to take home a paycheck. And so I was able to do all these things because of the cash flow that real estate was able to provide me with. And that was something that was important to me. The other thing that was important is building a legacy for my children. So in addition to the cash flow, 
real estate allows one to build a little bit more wealth and leave something behind for for one's family. And that's something that I thought about heavily and interestingly, um, more so during COVID than any other time. I think lots of physicians, many I knew, uh, crafted wills and all sorts of things during that time and thought to myself, geez, if something happened to me, what am I leaving behind for my kids? And so I needed something that was going to, one, improve that cash flow, but two, make sure I had that legacy, something to leave behind for my family. When you were getting started as well, and when you decided to pivot into the other areas within real estate, how did you decide where you wanted to focus your investments in terms of um, like markets and asset class types? I did a lot of research to answer the easier question. I think there are lots of ways to invest in real estate and be very successful, whether it's self-storage or multifamily or office spaces, et cetera. There, there are people in each class who are doing very, very well. I think I decided to go with multifamily again because it seems to be an enduring need and it tends to be more resilient than many of the asset classes. There are ups and downs for each asset class, but but multifamily tends to be more recession resilient. And so I, I decided to go that way. Remind me, what was the second half of your question? And so when you were looking at getting into real estate, you know, what were some of the things that you looked at in terms of like the markets and asset classes? Right. Absolutely. So the asset class, yes, multifamily. But the, the markets, we are very heavily research based and we wanted to ensure that where we invest, there would be need for multifamily, right? So we invest in large cities. Our two primary markets right now are Atlanta and Dallas, which happen to be the number one and number two markets within the country right now. But we we search for large markets where the population is, is growing, where the economy is very diverse, all things that hedge against a recession, right? What did it take to go from investing passively in, as a limited partner in different syndication deals to transitioning into more of a general partnership role? So I started getting my feet wet in the limited partnerships and I enjoyed it. I thought, wow, this is great. And I enjoyed the passive income that came with it. And I was able to make a little bit of a shift and scale back a little bit more, but I wanted more of that time. And so to create that time, I needed to create a little bit more income. And so I decided to scale back even further in medicine and take a deeper dive on the general partnership side. At the same time, I also explored other areas, you know, flips and, and roundup bills and stuff like that. But this seemed to suit me best. And it gave me the best balance of work-life balance without sacrificing my income too much. It's interesting because working as a practitioner, you're, you, you spend so much of your time in the office working and caring for patients. You tend to forget to also care about yourself and, and look at what you want and what you need in your own personal health. And then you also have a family too. So your, your thoughts and everything like that are, are much more split across so many different aspects, not just with your patients, but with your family as well. Yeah. And so when you, talk about transitioning and then getting a little bit more involved in real estate, looking for ways to get more active. It sounds like, you know, you're taking on so much more, you're actually losing time because you're taking on a new en endeavor, but it's not really the case because at that point you're choosing what you want to do and you're actually looking and wanting to explore this as a way to help yourself and focus on the things that you're passionate about. You're absolutely right about it, Eileen. Truthfully, I probably don't work any less, but I work in a way that gives me that freedom, that time freedom. You know, my kids don't know that I'm awake at five o'clock in the morning. When they wake up at 630, I'm in the kitchen with them. We're having breakfast. We're making lunch. We're singing. We're dancing. We're practicing our spelling words for the test and all of that. They don't know the difference. When I come home, it's not at 730 at night anymore. I make it home for dinner at 530. We do homework, we read together and they go to bed. And then after that, I do some work, but they don't have to see necessarily uh, that I'm always working, which is what my daughter had realized or had seen when, when I had not switched over or started crossing over as yet. So I don't think I work any less right now. I still work very, very hard, 
but it's doing something that gives me greater pleasure in terms of being able to be there for my family. That's part of who I am and that's an identity I want to embrace. Many of us think that once we follow these sort of career paths, it it, it creates your identity and that's who you are. And we have to have this monogamous relationship with, with medicine or whatever it is. And that's not true. We, we are allowed to be many things, whatever it is we want to be and to grow in other areas. And so I found that by having my feet in both ponds. So Mickey, what is next for you? I'm actively making uh, another shift right now. I definitely will continue to practice medicine and be involved in, in different ways. But now I can truly do what I love. I love integrative medicine, which is focusing more on preventative care. So right now, uh, a good 40% of my patients come to see me because they want true help. They want to get off medicines. They, and we do that through diets and exercise. And, and so I am crafting the kind of life I want in medicine. I'm shifting towards that niche right now. And I love it. And my patients love it. I, it gives me great joy when a patient comes back and says, not only did I lose the weight, but my wife did it too. And she lost 30 pounds and we're off the blood pressure pills and all of that. So I'm going to continue to do to do that. That's something I'm passionate about. And uh, we're going to continue to grow our company. We're three years in. Sia, my partner, and I are very excited about the future. He's recently made a shift in his uh, career as well. And so we are looking forward to a very successful 2023 uh, and growing the real estate business as well. And how has real estate investing impacted your life making? Freedom. If I had to use one word, freedom, the second word I would say is growth. I feel like a human being, Eileen. I I can exercise more. I uh, pay better attention to my diet. We, we talked about being there for my children more. And my husband and I both have aging parents and it's important for us to be there for them as well. And um, it's all of this has allowed me to just focus more on leading a more impactful life. I live all out. But the the thing that we the, that I, I've been able to do is just really live passionately and intently. And, and real estate has allowed me to do that because of the freedom, the freedom of time. I love that you mentioned that also and how you've been able to live more passionately too. And to being parents also, right? You said when you were working those long night shifts, coming home at 7.30, that's all your daughter had seen you do as a, as a working professional. She didn't really separate what you actually were doing and how you were actually living your life. And then now to be able to see you doing what you love and living life more fulfilling, it really paves a path for her to try to figure out what she wants to do in life and how she can envision and the things that she could accomplished too as she gets older and older. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll tell you a story. She sees that there are many different paths. She knows I work hard and I want her to know that because, and I have a son too. I, I talk about her a lot because she, she was the one who spoke to me on that day, but I want both of my kids to realize that in this world, you should work hard. You should want to work hard and you should also want to create an impact. And I felt great when I saw her with a drawing of apartments on her notepad with her stethoscope around her neck. It's like, go girl, you can do whatever you want. As long as you work hard and you're persistent, you could do it. And what is the one thing that you know now about real estate that you wish you knew when you first started? Gosh, it's so much fun. I've met incredible people and those connections that I have built, I would not have uh, been able to do so if I hadn't gotten into this space. Those connections and the personal growth, I have read so much more. And I think that feeds my soul and truly has helped me be a better human being in a way that I would not have ima imagined. It's interesting, isn't it, that when you first in embark on this real estate journey, that you focus on creating a lifestyle for yourself and creating some more freedom. But it also comes with all these other things that you didn't expect, like the network and the friendships and the personal development. All of this also comes with it as you yourself are starting to grow, too. Yes, it's it's been a pleasant surprise uh, and one that I've fully embraced. And what is the one thing that sets the successful people apart in real estate investing? It's a mindset. 
having a strong growth mindset is absolutely key. Life happens. Winter comes every year. And as Tony Robbins says, some people are going to shrivel up and die in winter. And other people are going to learn to snowboard and ski. And, and having that strong mind, mindset, I think, is what helps the successful real estate investors learn how to snowboard and ski. And Mickey, where can our listeners find out more about you and what you're doing? You can visit our website, which is titancorecapital.com. That's T-I-T-A-N-C-O-R capital.com or email me. Uh, email is my preferred way of communication. Mickey, that's M-I-K-K-I at titancorecapital. That's T-I-T-A-N-C-O-R capital.com. Thank you so much for all of your time, Mickey. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Eileen. And thank you for listening to our podcast today, brought to you by Bonavis Capital. We would really appreciate it if you can go to iTunes right now and leave a rating and written review. Also, please don't forget to subscribe so you can always get the latest episodes. You can also connect with us on Facebook, How Did They Do It Real Estate? We'd love to hear your feedback and any topics that you're interested in for future episodes. Lastly, to learn more about us, you can go to bonifestcapital.com and fill out the contact us page so you can speak to us directly. Nothing on the show should be considered as specific personal advice. Please consult your legal, tax, and real estate professionals for individualized advice.